Hey everyone, and welcome to a brand new episode of Baboom. I know I've been off the radar for a little bit, and I have to apologize for that. I usually do have to apologize for being off the radar, but then again, I don't do YouTube for a living. I do this for fun. And what's another thing that I do for fun? I fuck around with my computer. A lot. Um, I recently got a 1080 GTX from MSI. No, this is not an endorsement. This is not a paid advertisement. I am simply telling you the brand and the card that I have received. I also updated the case for my computer because I was originally running dual 780 GTXs and the 700 series by Nvidia tends to run pretty hot. The architecture is not that great and to be honest, the cards were feeling kind of dated. So I decided to take the plunge I had some extra winning money from a few bets that I did, and voila, here we are. So, I decided to test this baby with a few benchmarks, you know, uh, try, and, try and really see what I could throw at it. And right now what you're looking at is the MSI uh, 3D Mark Flame benchmark, I think it's called. And uh, it, it did pretty well. It, it got a score of about 16,000. There are some people out there with complete monsters that get like 75,000 and they they cool their computers using liquid nitrogen and shit like give me a break right those are the people that have shit tons of money but this is just me with an upgraded card and I, I just kind of wanted to push it to the test now uh, a few things that you got to kind of realize whenever you yourself want a new video card and I, and I get asked this a lot or I'm told this a lot is I'm I'm saving for a new video card. How do I do it? I, I I I want a new video card. I just can't. Well, you can. The the you need to save. You need you need to set the priorities on what exactly you're buying. So think about it like this: you have lunch time, right? And you go to Subway. You spend ten dollars a day on lunch, getting a drink, getting a sandwich, chips, whatever. That's 50 bucks a week if you're working five days a week. Then that's $200 a month. Within three months, you can have 600 bucks. And that's just from lunches. Imagine all the other uh, extra spending that you do throughout the day. Maybe you wanna buy an energy drink or a snack from a gas station. And you know, it, it all just adds up. Um, but it's not just as easy as buying a new video card. There are several things that you need to take into account when it comes to video cards. And you have things like power supply and you have the connection itself from the video card to the rest of your computer. The power supply needs to reach a specific minimum for the video card. Because think about it like this. If you have too small of a power supply and you try to <laughs> use a video card that, that uses 100 watts more, right? What's gonna happen is your computer is gonna shut off. The video card is gonna be trying to draw power and your computer is just gonna be like, whoa, I, I, the, the power supply just can't dish that out. It just can't. So it shuts off or sometimes in even rare cases completely fries it. So you wanna make sure that you have a video card that meets the minimum requirements Every single advertiser, every single person that you buy from, they have to list this. This is a necessary piece of information. If they don't tell you how much power is required by the video card, then they are doing something wrong. Do not buy from them. They are not doing their job correctly. But you can always do your own research from the actual retailing site, like NVIDIA or AMD, depending on who you're planning on buying from, and they will tell you the minimum specifications. The other thing you have to worry about is the connection. Now the connection is a little bit more complicated. It's not as easy as a power supply. Say, hey, I'm gonna go on Newegg and buy myself a $60 power supply and it's 600 watts or something. It, it gets a little bit more complicated. Imagine it like this. Your motherboard has its own highway, right? And then you have the video card that has its own highway. And I'm talking about like cars, right? So each of these have their own highway, and at some point, both of these highways have to merge. 
The problem is, is let's say your video card has a four lane highway and your motherboard has a two lane highway. How do you merge four lanes into two? That's going to cause some, some traffic. And this is a, a term that's called bottlenecking. Bottlenecking means uh, you're, you're trying to shove too much information through something that's particularly too tight or too slow. And it's not able to process all of it. So you're kind of suffering because of it. You want uh, a motherboard that I guess matches the same connection as the video card. It's not necessary in a lot of regards. There are definitely some cases where it is, but it not in every regard is it completely honestly super duper necessary that it immediately matches the same exact connection type. This is just so you can utilize 100% of that highway instead of putting some of it to waste, instead of letting it bottleneck, instead of letting it slow down. Um, this is Alien Isolation, just showing that off. Uh, normally I couldn't play this. This is completely maxed out. Every single possible thing maxed out. And this card is destroying it. As you can see at the top left, I have temperature, RAM usage, uh, it, it's nuts, frames per second. They're completely maxed out. Just one of these cards, 140 frames per second. It was blowing my mind while I was playing this. Normally with the dual 780s that I had, it was running hot. Uh, one of my cards, not from playing this, from playing something else, 198 degrees Fahrenheit that is not safe that's scary the minimum you would want these cards to be at is geez 180 at, well at most at most you would want it to be at 180 it gets disgustingly scary to say this could possibly just start a fire right here it could but now I can actually play this with ease and I'm going to try and enjoy it while I'm not constantly checking every single corner for an alien. Um, there's also a few other games that I have planned later in the video. Unreal Tournament and then Lichdom, which uses the CryEngine 3. Unreal Tournament uses Unreal 4. And I think that was a very good test to see... I guess what a next gen engine would really run like on this card and I was not disappointed with that either and then you can also see how bad I am at Unreal Tournament it has been a long time since 2004 <laughs> um, this card for the $619 price tag that I paid for it, it was on sale from the 719 and yes they are coming out with the 1080 Ti's which is a beefier version of what I have for maybe even the same price or a little bit more but that wasn't my concern this card is strong this card is not like the arrogant kind of strong either this is the this is the kind of card that just does amazing just naturally right out of the box and it's not trying to be an ass about it it's uh, if I had to give it some kind of personality, it's it's this card that's just good at what it does. It knows what it's capable of. There have been, there's been one hiccup that I have noticed, and that was during Lichdom, which is the game that you'll see later, where there was some strange texture pop in on a character's face, but every other game has not had any issues, and I think that was just like an isolated issue with that one scene in that one game. So it's nothing really to complain about. So, so far, as you can see with the temperatures with this card, it's low. Look at it. It's, it's 140 frames per second. Everything completely maxed out. And it's not even running hot. It's not even hot enough to cook an egg yet. Like, it's, it's smoothly running this with no issue. And... I cannot wait to play other games like Space Hulk Deathwing when that comes out. I, I want to see more games that, uh, I guess, 
not just push things as far as textures and models go, but I would love to see more actual special effects like particles, physics, smoke, and things like that. Because that really adds a lot of atmosphere, a lot of um, immersion. All right. Yeah, I'm going to use that word immersion. And speaking of immersion, there's this 1080 and now 4k thing going on 4k is apparently a lot better than 1080 looks a lot better and when it looks a lot better you can kind of i guess be in the game a little bit more 1080 is is old news and trust me i it, it hurts me to say this but all of a sudden now now i feel like I, I need to be doing 4k and this monitor that i have now was like 450 bucks so now I feel like because I have a card that's capable of 4K, eventually I'm going to have to think about doing 4K or even SLI 1080s, but that is way down the road. And I know I can do it. I have another uh, PCI slot. I have an 850 watt power supply. Why is it so big? Because I saw this coming at some point. So you, you kind of, I don't want to use the term future proof, but you at least have to think ahead. You can't just say, um, oh, I want to buy a new part and then the whole computer will work just fine. Some people out there actually don't have that pleasure of being able to just up, upgrade their computer because their computer already is just so in, incredibly crappy. They can't do anything about it. So do the best that you can if you feel like you can't upgrade the computer you have now go to a place like pc part picker try and customize your own computer learn because you are not going to uh suffer from learning how to build your own computer going on a website like dell or alienware or hp or even New Age, Cyber Power, all these other places, and just buying pre-built ones. You're, you're still just going to always rely on pre-built, that, that pre-built mentality, where you're willing to pay extra money for someone else to build you a computer. You don't need to do something like that. It's ridiculous. You could easily learn it how to plug these two things together. You know Terry Crews? The, uh, the big buff black guy from all the Red Spice commercials, or what is it, Red Spice, Old Spice? And he learned how to build his own computer because his son was into it. Like, he, he wanted this father-son connection, and he built, he learned how to build his own computer. He asked people on the internet, he did his own research, and he bought parts, and he put them together. He learned how to do it. You wouldn't expect him to do that, but he did. If he can do it, you can do it. I mean, he's like, what, a 40-year-old guy who's never touched computers in his entire life and he decided to put the money and time forward and learned it? Come on. You may not have the money, but at, yeah, at least got the time. Oh, does this part match that part? Yeah, sure. What's the minimum power requirement for this part? Well, okay, well, I'm going to need to match that with this power supply. It is. It does not get that difficult. It really does not. Um... You can only benefit from this, especially when people ask you, you know, oh, well, I don't know anything about computers. You know how smart you sound when you stand there and say, oh, yeah, well, I build my own computer. Oh, well, you know everything about the computer, you know, well, they, all of a sudden you're putting this positive light, you know, you're the computer guy, which can be a positive thing in a workplace. Oh, man. As you can see now, not to veer off track here. I suck at Unreal Tournament, and these are bots on God knows how low of a difficulty, so I'm trying my best here. Um, I did have some other footage earlier, but I accidentally deleted it. Oh. Honestly, do what you can. Save what you can. I'm tired of hearing people, I'm saving for a new graphics card, and, and they just never get it, and they never pull it off. It's possible. It 100% is possible. Just try. Just, just stop 
excessively spending. You don't always have to go to the movies. You don't always have to buy dinner. You don't always have to buy lunch. Make your own lunches, whether it just be a sandwich or something. When, when friends ask you, how come you're not doing this uh, specific thing because it costs money, say, hey, look, I'm saving up for something. I, I need that, like, or I, or I really want that. You don't have to really justify why you're saving up for something. People understand that. They've done it before themselves. Right now, you're looking at Lichdom, which is a spellcasting game in the Crisis 3 engine. Beautiful game. Lots of particle effects with the spellcasting, lots of shadows, lighting. So I decided to re-download it because it originally ran my system hot, but I, f I said, hey, look, 1080, let's, let's give it a rock and look at it. It, this is after maybe an hour and a half of playing. It's it's not even at 150 degrees, and it's been running over 100 FPS the entire time. All these lighting effects, particle effects. This card is a beast. It, it's not the biggest beast. It's it's strange to say that, even despite seeing all of this, the computer can run better. Like, these games somehow can run even better. Even though it's already completely maxed out and 100% can't look any better than this. Or possibly play any better than this. Those digits at the top left of that screen can be better. And that's, that's I guess, where that mentality comes from. Because it's, it's kind of like people who soup up their race cars and all this other kind of stuff. It's, it's just something that they enjoy doing. You know, they, they want that extra, they want, they want to go that extra mile. Oh, man. So, I'm not really going to harp on this whole PC console thing or anything like that. But as you can see, PC does have this edge. And you are going to be left behind if you don't at least somehow teach yourself just a little bit on how to, I don't know, customize or build or something there's 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 gonna be this time where you're gonna be like damn I, I really wish I knew what I was looking at when it came to video cards and you're gonna be thinking of me you're gonna be thinking of me